Hi friends, couple questions for you. How often do you laugh? And how often do you take time out from your busy schedule to actually rejuvenate, refresh and relax? These questions are important to consider because they can actually modify your genetic destiny and your health outcomes. This is what this video is gonna be about, which is pretty cool. So stay tuned. Many of you probably have seen the past few videos where I've been discussing the topic of how we can change our mindset and alter our biochemistry and our brain functioning with mind-body medicine and integrative medicine. Literally, we have the ability with certain lifestyle practices and mind-body-based practices such as yoga, meditation, tai chi, uh, other practices that bring about a sense of calm to turn on genes that are health promoting and use them to turn down molecular signals that are harmful. Literally several mind-body practices have been found to reverse the detrimental cellular signals of stress and turn on the beneficial molecular patterning that rewrite our brains and our bodies to thrive. And this is important, right? Because stress in all that it is cracked up to be and rooted in really is one of the most important determinants of why people visit their health care provider. And it's related to a lot of physical and emotional health issues, if not all of them. Now, on a side note, essential oils instantaneously interrupt this perception of stress as they balance our mood and bodily processes. And they can provide a powerful synergy with this epigenetic modification of integrative medicine, lifestyle medicine, and mind-body practices. So this is cool because if we find ourselves in a loop of negative news, fear, or even worry, this is going to potentially create chemical cascades in our body that harm our health. But we can choose to implement these natural approaches to actually counteract that and put our wellness for mind over our genes, which is, right, pretty neat. So these scientific reasons for practicing uh, integrative medicine and mind-body medicine make us healthier and optimize wellness outcomes are pretty serious, right? They're scientific, they're serious. Now I want to talk a little bit more about a lighter subject, about laughter, and also about something more relaxing, about relaxation, because these two practices, as well as some of the more sober mind-body practices, can also benefit our genetic destiny and our health outcomes. Let me talk about that a little bit, starting with laughter. Okay, so laughter actually has been shown to have many cardiovascular benefits. They've connected people who laugh more often and have a more optimistic mood to better cardiovascular disease outcomes and better cardiac health in general. Now, in an article from Townsend Letter, the author reviewed different studies that showed how laughter actually affects the genetic expression of our bodies, specifically pathways which modulate blood sugar. And there's a connection between insulin and cardiac health, as well as inflammation signaling. So this can result in better heart functioning. So that's a potential pathway of why laughter is linked to heart health. Furthermore, there's a genetic link between people who laugh more often and this serotonin transporter gene, right? It's um, those with a specific variation in that gene actually will laugh out loud more often. So what's neat about this is three potential implications, right? So not only is there a link between tickling our blood sugar genes. But this impact can also explain, like I mentioned, the cardiovascular benefits associated with laughter. And it also explains why some people who are more depressed, there's a genetic tendency to laugh less. And this genetic tendency to laugh less can also be kind of this feed forward cycle of not tickling those genes that modulate blood sugar and impacting heart health in a not so positive way. 
And the coolest implication of these findings is it's empowering for your health. Because if you know that laughing benefits your blood sugar and it benefits your heart, why not do it more? And if you're someone who you think might have a variation in that laughter gene, maybe you're going to seek out more humor so that you can get some of those cardiovascular benefits, empowering your health and your genetic destiny. So that's one cool practice that you can use to empower your health besides some of the mind-body practices that were discussed in the previous videos. Don't worry, there will be a link in the video description to the article that goes with this video that will reference back to those videos if you missed them and you wanna go back, or you can just go to my YouTube channel. Now, the other way that we can modify our genetic expression is just by taking time out and relaxing. Specifically, uh, Dr. Kara Fitzgerald actually interviewed Dr. Sarah Mendick, and she's been studying the relaxation response, and it does impact our DNA. And every single practice that elicits a relaxation response can lead to a favorable change in this process of DNA methylation, which actually changes how your genes express themselves and what's turned on and off. So beneficial pathways are turned on, kind of pathways that are more inflammatory and not so health promoting are turned off. So, and this can be in any form of relaxation that you find nourishing. So why not relax more? Now, if you need help being convinced of relaxing or how to put it into your day because society is so busy keeping us busy and making us feel guilty if we take a relaxation break, so probably a little bit less now because sleep and relaxation are really getting on the forefront of being important for our overall health. But that being said, uh, Dr. Fitzgerald offered three steps and I kind of went with these steps and embellished them a little as well for you. So the first thing you want to do is find something that's nourishing to you that will bring you joy. And this could be laughing right? Playing music. Laughing can be relaxing to a certain extent. Uh, meditation, mindfulness practices, walking out in nature, anything that you're going to be more likely to stick with because you actually like it is important to create a ritual because it's pleasurable. So you're going to want to come back to it more and more. Then what you can do is after you find this, kind of think about what motivates you to why you want to stick to it. Right? If we have a certain motivation, we're more likely to do it. So one of the things to keep in mind is you can't optimize your purpose, your life goals, or be a good friend, companion, parent, whatever role you have in life, a worker, without taking time to downregulate stress and upregulate these molecules of health. So think about what key areas in your life can be used to drive your commitment to relax, to relax more. And think about why you want to alter your wellness outcomes at your DNA level for the better. Is it so that you're healthier for your grandkids so you can keep up with them and be at your great grandchild's wedding? Or is it because you have a purpose that you wanna move forward through and you don't wanna burn out and sizzle out before you get to the next level of your dreams and the impact that you could have? Or is it just because you wanna enjoy life and you know that you wanna extend your time with the ones you love? All of these are important reasons. So think about that and then think about what you like to do. Those are the first two steps. And then the third step is just find time to do it whatever time of day, whatever space that you most likely can make is the best time to do it because you'll actually do it, even if you start off slow. So remember, find something you love. Think about why you want to incorporate more relaxation and why it's important to take care of yourself. And then actually make the time to do it. And those can be any relaxation response, even just sitting down and sipping and smelling your coffee in the morning, right? So let's take time to find joy in our life and nurture ourselves with silence and calm. This should be as much of a priority as part of your wellness program where you are exercising or moving and incorporating foods that nourish your brain and body. 
We want to disengage from this chaotic world and take time to practice integrative techniques and also laugh a little more and relax a little more to alleviate the negative emotional and physical impacts that what we're up against in the world right now is putting upon us. I heard a wise man once say, the more I have to do, the more I take time out to meditate. Now that's a guru, right? <laughs> but it's important to remember that the more that we stay focused, the less stressed we are, the more we can promote these health promoting genes that actually rewire our brain and help us focus better and be healthier, the more productive we are, and the more we get done in less time as well. So taking that time out is actually going to pay it forward, probably in more time to relax. So it's a feed forward positive cycle. What do you think? I would love to have your feedback. So go ahead and comment on the video or the social media channel you're watching this on or my blog, and we can start a discussion on our favorite ways to relax, what we find most funny, please keep it clean and kind, and um, how we're gonna make a commitment to relax more and use some mind body practices to better our gene expression and to make our lives more fulfilling and happy and a little bit fun with all that we're up against. And also, if you have a favorite oil that you want to use with these practices, make sure you include those too. Finally, remember to check out all the resources that I have available for you either for free or as well for a small fee to take classes with me to learn more about my body practices and essential oils to better your life and help you thrive and flourish and create a life that you love. And I will be back. I really hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day or evening whenever you're watching this.